So the first thing you guys want to do is open up the assignment sheet that's located in the assignment on Google Classroom. So you want to open this up and make sure you read over it because there's a few things that each of you are going to be doing differently. So if your name starts with A through L, your font must be serif. So understand what serif and sans serif is before you start the assignment. Um, and then kind of write it in your notes. If your last name starts with M through Z, your font's going to be sans serif. So when you're creating your font and your sketches, you need to make sure it's either serif or sans serif according to your last name. So we're going to be using an application called Bird Font to create the font when you're finished um, creating each one of them in Illustrator. So each each uh, character that you create in Illustrator, you're going to copy and paste it in the bird font. And I'm going to show you how to do it. And I'm also, also going to kind of guide you through um, how you should be creating your font. <clears throat> now, I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, the files that need to be uploaded by the end of the assignment is your sketches and then your final true type font file, you need to make sure it's saved as a TTF. And then once it's saved, <coughs> you're going to upload that into um, Google Classroom along with the sketches. And also, I want to make sure that you guys install your font and make sure that it works in Illustrator and Photoshop. Uh, you can see down here what I'm, I want you to do is make sure that your fonts are filled in. Don't have outlines. Just make sure that they're all filled in correctly. Um, kind of like this one, this one, and this one is. These are examples from last year. Always check the rubric before you upload. I already um, did my sketches for this, so I'm going to copy from... Photoshop, select all, copy, and then I'm going to go into Illustrator, create a new file. So it doesn't really matter uh, what size your file is, is here. And then I'll just paste it into Illustrator. <clears throat> My artboard's this size, so I'm just going to resize to fit onto the artboard. And then I'm going to check my layers, <clears throat> and I'm going to lock this sketch layer and add a new layer on top so that I'm using that as working working layer. So so I'm just going to go ahead and trace uh, the sketches. We're, we're done quickly, so I just wanted to show you guys how to um, create your font in Illustrator to port over to bird font. I think I have snap to point here, so I'm going to take snap to pixel off and snap the point off so that it doesn't have that snapping there. So I'm just going to create this by tracing what I created in my sketch. And you can see that it has a center here. So what I'm going to do is you create the center and you have to make sure that you want to select both your outside and center and then you're going to minus the middle. You could use Pathfinder or you can use your Shape Builder tool. So I will click on that and just minus out the center by clicking on Option to make it a minus. See how I'm switching from minus to plus and just click that shape there. So now if I select this and I give it a fill color of black. So I'm going to give it a fill color of black. Then you should have this cut out. Um, now I'm going to go over to my launch pad here. And I'm going to find bird font. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to go back in Illustrator. And I'm going to copy Command C my letter, capital letter A here. And Let's go back to bird font. When bird font opens, it says open font license. You want to click that. 
and then create new font. All right, so now I'm going to find a, select it, and you can paste in. After you paste your letter into bird font, you want to set it onto the baseline, and then you want to resize. Um, you're going to, I think you have to click this one here, resize and rotate paths. So I would press Command A, grab a corner, and then set your your cap height. And I want this to be on the baseline. And be aware of where you're setting your, your type because this is the, the kerning that you would have the space between this letter and the next letter when you're typing out your font. So you don't want this line to be close. You want to have a little bit of space here. And you want this to be on, on the left here. You want it to kind of snug up there so that you're only counting the space to the right of each letter. So now that you have your your capital A in there, then I would go back and create each letter the same way, making sure that if you have anything inside of that letter, like you can see that the B has two cutouts here, two shapes that should be cut out from in the inside, you have to make sure that you're cutting those shapes out. So you're going to go in here, you create your shape. I mean, hopefully you guys are spending a lot more time on these. I created this sketch very quickly just so that I could show you uh, what this would look like when you um, you create your your font. So. I'm going to select my letter B, copy, go back to bird font, and I'm going to go back to overview. I could double click on B and paste in. So I want to set it onto the baseline. Uh, make sure that I have resize here. Command A for select all and click and drag. Then you can see that. Now I have A and B, and then you're just going to keep on going through the alphabet. Make sure that you can check to see all of the different characters that you need to create. Uh, make sure you have all these characters, and uh, when you're finished, um, you will save it as a true type font. So you always want to save your file so you go to file and then save so it'll save as a bird bird font for the native file and this is not going to be your finish. Your finish has to be saved as a true type font. But make sure you're saving as you're going because you don't want to lose your work. So when you have too much space over here, you just want to keep everything consistent. So I would move the line if, if it's like something like an I where you don't want the kerning to be too wide. You want to move your the right of of your, your letter here so that um, you know the space after the letter uh, is, is kind of similar to the space on other letters. So you could even go a little bit further in here. Um, you could see that the H is a little 
a little bit too much space. Um, G is not bad, but you all you kind of want to keep it consistent throughout. And you go back into this letter and select. This looks like there's an issue with a couple points here. So I want to go over to the three bars over here, and I want to export, and I want to export fonts. So I want to give it a name, and I would call it something different. Just maybe put your first name and last initial, um, and then same thing for this one just first name last initial and just keep the mac in there um, this should be fine save it as a true type you don't need to save it as anything else make sure it's ttf because that's the file that you need to upload for it to the assignment um, you can give it a description i think uh, you should change this also to the same and uh, type type in regular for this so identifier and then the rest of it you do not need to put that information in there if you don't want to um, I would change this name to the same I'm pretty sure that should go through making sure all the settings are correct and then once the export settings are correct you would hit export so once you hit export you can see that it exported an HTML file where you can open up by double clicking on it and it should open up into a web browser where you can see that it has all of my letters in here with um, distance apart from each other. Um, and you could fix the distance by the, the kerning by coming back into uh, bird font and adjusting like the H looks like there was a little bit so you could adjust your kerning here. So it looks like the H has a little bit of space so it's it's the letters in between here um, I do not have lowercase I did not go through there and create all the lowercase so once you guys finish your lowercase you should be able to see um, your font populate here and fully populate so I would also go into either Illustrator or Photoshop and type type the alphabet <clears throat> and uh, make sure that your kerning is correct so I see P here that has a little bit more than it should and maybe R and um, maybe a little I think that's pretty close but like you could see that F might H might have a little bit that I could kind of correct so H, I might want to bring it back just a little bit, and it looked like <clears throat> P had more. So if I go to P, I can see that there's a lot of space there, so I want to shorten that uh, space that you have after your letter. And then I would go back over to export. So you would 
import and export, export fonts. And then I would reinstall, but first you would go to your font book and you can right click on your font and this remove it. <clears throat> then you can go ahead and reinstall it. So I want to install, if I go back here and update it, you could see that now there's less space between the P and the Q. Uh, there's also space in between the J. Maybe you want to make sure there's, this might be a little bit, we might need to add space here on the Q. So if I go over to the Q, I could see that, um, that the space here is pretty close. So I can separate a little bit more and go back over to import and export, export fonts again, and go to your font book, right click on the font, remove it, and then you're going to reinstall it by double clicking on it on your font, your true type font. You can see it's there now. So I did Q, update it. It's updated here. You see that there's a little bit more space. You, know, you could finagle with it, um, make sure that <clears throat> your kerning's correct throughout. And once it's correct and it looks, it looks good, um, you could upload your true type font to Google Classroom.